Hello. I tried to record some yellow Grandmaster levels, but like those didn't go that well, and I like, don't really enjoy them that much. So I just want to do one that I know will be fun for sure, which is World Abyss. This is like one of my favorite Grandmaster maps, definitely. Yay, good music. And this mysterious thing. Okay, let's go. Introduction room. Uh, almost first try. Yeah, so the routing challenges in this were a lot of fun. I like, enjoy doing puzzles. And also, because I play without save states, that made it harder in a good way, in my opinion. In my experience, that still made it a lot of fun. Maybe even more fun, I don't know. Like, for me personally. Just because it's so hard to figure things out like this. But I did do a lot of putting my fingers on the screen to see where exactly things go, which helped a lot. And then I just need to get there once and remember the locations that the blocks were in. And then I can extrapolate what I needed to do from there afterwards when looking from binoculars. Personally, I feel like this map is just a direct upgrade from clockwork. Oh yeah, I need to dash. I'm doing surprisingly well, honestly. That was good. So... Right dash and dream hyper. And you make it to the next place. Oh, you can view this entire next room from here. That's interesting. Wait, could you go even further? Yeah, you can view the next two parts. Yeah, that's cool. Why am I too slow now? Did I like press jump for not as long? I'll try that. If I made it there. Yeah, I think a shorter jump press there should help. I just love how this map takes such simple mechanics like moving blocks and springs and turns them into this routing puzzle, super fast paced gameplay. Like, especially with the creation story of this map, where they didn't have access to a computer of their own, they couldn't test it. Like, they had to design a Celeste map without having access to Celeste, and they did it successfully. And this complex of a map, and how it turned out so well. Too early. That was the furthest attempt in a while, though. There. Okay, I need to be a little bit more patient there. Yes! Did it! Next part! That's so fun to play. How is this map so good? Like, I'm trying to think what exactly is the difference between this map and Garden of Kutara that makes me like this a lot and not like Garden of Kutara. I think it's just that this map is a lot more diverse. And also that it's a routing challenge at the same time. 
both of those factors I like. Like, Garden of Kodara just has wave dashes, reverse wave dashes, ultras, wall bounces. But this has, like, more kinds of timings with spring cancels and stuff. Hyper B hops, dream hypers. Okay, let's see the next room. Upright dash, keep the spring, up dash, down dash, right dash. And then I probably use that spring on this block in the center. And I don't think the secret was here yet. Oh, another reason why I like this map more is that there are moving blocks that adds complexity. Like, I don't think the zippers slash traffic blocks add the same kind of complexity. Right dash wall bounce and hit the other block spring. And wave dash. Yeah, I don't remember this part. Okay, at that level. Oh, you use that dream block. Yeah. So you wave dash here, upright dash into the dream block and dream hyper. No. Maybe I should crouch dash there. Like crouch dash on the right dash into the second gray spring. Okay, I was too slow. No, oh, that was close. I just need to be a little bit faster to get the wave dash right. Taking a bath break. Can you get back from there? Oh, there's this random block. I don't think you can get back. Death. Oh yeah, I should hit the spring of that instead of jumping off of it. That's a lot better. Is it the right height for me to left dash? I think it is. Like left dash into the spring on this bottom moving block. Yeah, that's a lot better, but I failed because I was bad. Okay, that time I didn't skill issue. Another really good room. Like, I think that's a really fascinating routing puzzle there. Um, it's not visible, I need to retry for it. Like, this part. I think that's like, really cool routing. Like, there's no other easy way to do it. And it lines up perfectly. It's like, so unpredictable at first glance that it would be the solution. But it just is. And I love that. And I think I grab and then wall bounce. Grab, wall bounce, up left dash, hyper. And up dash, right dash, dream hyper. And there will be a block, I think, yeah. Block on the right will move all the way up into the exact right spot. Yeah. And you hit that spring, then I think the dream block will be right there, so you can dream hyper and bunny hop again. And then that block will be there. What can you do with it? You've st I've stepped on it at that point. Maybe you can grab it and get a block boosted wall bounce. I think that's pretty likely actually, but I don't remember. But where does the dream block go? Yeah, right there. I think you can grab the dream block on the right side. Like, go through it and dream grab. Then you'll grab the coin when you're on it. And then left dash and jump out of it. And you can get on top of that.
I can't get that dream hyper for some reason. I think I'm just too early. Yeah, I'm too early. Yeah. No, I think I shouldn't have dashed there. Wait, I need to make sure I don't miss the secret. I don't think it's here though, but I want to make sure. Because I didn't get it on my first time playing and I'm kinda sad about that. I've seen the cutscene before, but I want to get there on my own as well. And without cheating at all. Like no debug map or anything. And this is my chance to do it. Dream hypering too early again. Okay there. Now I didn't dash. And transition. Nothing there. Oh no. Can I do that without dashing? No, oh, I can do that. No, oh, oh, it wasn't? Okay. It worked. Just stamina? Also, that point right there, if you like, go back 10 seconds. That part is like... Apparently, part of a room later. I didn't realize that ever before, but I saw it on my Discord, someone said it. And I think that's really cool. Just like another little thing that makes this map great. Water is funny, it makes like... <laughs> huge bubble. Okay, what was this? Oh, this. That was pretty far on the first try. Another really good room. <laughs> this map does not miss. Oh yeah, this... I remember this being like super fun to route. Like, I enjoyed it so much. Like, this section here... It... I had kind of a blind spot for a while, but then I got it. That you need to reverse wave dash. After getting that coin on the top there. Down dash and reverse wave dash. That was like a really fun realization. And like, again, I'm doing it without save states. I can't just put a save state on this wall bounce and then repeat it until I notice that, oh, the block is in the right spot. I have to, like, actually get there in real attempts or see it from the binoculars. But I think that makes it even better, kind of. Like, it doesn't bother me to not know exactly what to do yet, because the attempts that I get to the part that I haven't figured out yet don't go to waste, because it's just practice for when I do know what to do. So I can just do my best to get to the section so I can figure things out, and then use the knowledge and practice to do it. Like, all it does is prevent flukes. Like, I don't think there's extra disadvantage to not using safe states in this map compared to other hard maps. It just makes it more fun to figure out the routing in my opinion. Well, I haven't routed this map with safe states, I did it completely without, so I can't really judge which one would be more fun. But I do like puzzles, so I think it's more fun for me, because I like puzzles. <laughs> And making it more hard makes it more fun for me. And this part... Which one was first? You like Demo Hyper, of course. I think you need to go up first for that coin. For that white coin. Wait, no. I don't know which place the white coin goes to first, so I need to get there first to remember which thing to do. And I need to slow things down so I can get the block boosted wall bounce. Um, I didn't look which place it went to. Okay, it goes up. 
so I need to go up first. So once I get there, demo hyper, up dash, wall bounce to get the coin, then reverse wave dash, down right dash, down left dash, and then up right. After the upright dash, do I do a straight right dash to hit the slow spring? And then what do I do after that? Does this block already hit it there? No, it continues going. So maybe I can like reverse wave dash off of it or something. Okay, I'll just practice. Now that wasn't like... Wait, do I like... Upright dash twice. I think that might be it. Yeah, upright dash twice, then re do I reverse wave dash or do I wait longer and do a normal wave dash? I think a normal one should be easier. And then wave dash again here. Or do I ultra? That's the heights for an ultra, but I don't think it's needed. I know after that you do a wall bounce and wave dash from here and go back left. And use like those moving blocks there. I'll try a reg two regular wave dashes first and see what happens. Oh, I did an ultra. That went too high. Also, it felt kind of awkward to do the normal wave dash, or maybe I just need to be a little bit slower. If I run into problems where I'm too slow later, then I need to switch to reverse wave dash. I think I'm supposed to reverse. I'm going to do the reverse. The timing just feels more natural for the reverse. I didn't, didn't an ultra again. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm still, like, having trouble getting through this first part. It is hard. No, that was far. At least I have, like, done the correct thing once, so it'll be easier to repeat it again. I'm not, like, stuck to the ultra habit anymore. No, what? Oh, I can just keep holding jump through, I think. And then there's the other block. Does it have trigger spikes on top? Anyway, there I get two dashes. If it has trigger spikes on top, then I need to just forward dash and wave dash or upright dash and wave dash. It looks like trigger spikes, yeah. I've been putting like a lot of time into this room now. Just doing a lot of mindless attempts. With this music, it's kind of like a zen mode. <laughs> like, even sort of relaxing. Even though I'm, like, half focusing the whole time. But this music, like, really induces that kind of low practice state. It's, like, perfect for that. And I love the song because of that as well. Oh, okay, up dash is too high, unless I need to up dash like instantly, which seems not realistic. I need to be kind of fast and then do an up left dash. I did the wrong thing, but I did it. I should have done the up left dash, but I once again up dashed on instinct, but it worked. Okay, that was so good. That was once again really fun. As I was talking, it like started that kind of practicing flow state, which is nice, but it's also just really cool movement. It flows so well. It like has a lot of variation with all the spring cancels and block boosted things. Slight block boosts everywhere. 
Oh, here's the secret. Okay, here. Wait, what's here? ADHD brain must know <laughs> nothing. What about on the side? A series, the ADHD brain must know. Ah, there is death. Okay, spawn point. Yeah, this place. I'm raising the volume on my headphones. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yes, Lugia. <laughs> oh, I'm double stick. <laughs> Very good person name. Seas of time. What seas of time? <laughs> is that like... I guess it's just the place where Temporal Tower is. Yeah, Temporal Tower. Yeah! I played Temporal Tower. I did... I've never finished Grandmaster in Strawberry Jam, but I should probably go back and do it. I could definitely do it now. Because it's easier than Strawberry Jam and I've beaten Strawberry Jam, so it should be doable now. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I did play Temporal Tower and I really liked it as well. So it's not surprising that a sequel map like this would be also fun. Like it had very like similar vibes. Wait, Dialga. Is that another Pokemon or what? I can look it up. Yeah, so Dialga is like part of some sort of creation trio. And Dialga also represents time. So it makes sense that Dialga would be related to Temporal Tower. Because Temporal, of course, means like time-based. Yeah, so I guess this is like... <laughs> is this like... Pokemon fanfiction with Celeste integrated into it. <laughs> kind of funny. But also seems to work well so far. Like, as a way of storytelling. Yeah, the debris. Yep. Wait, so it, like, stayed sort of intact? Giratina. That's another Pokemon, isn't it? So, Giratina is also part of the creation trio. Like, also to clarify, I'm not a Pokemon fan. I know, like, some random stuff, but most of Pokemon I don't know. Like, I'm not familiar with all the different kind of Pokemons with from all the different generations. So Giratina represents antimatter. It's just some sort of unrelated other god Pokemon <laughs> or legendary Pokemon but seems like it's like almost god status. Okay what else? Like I have glossed through this dialogue before like, I saw it on a video and didn't pause, but this is more interesting now that I'm, like, going through it slowly and looking up the references. <laughs> yeah, Dav would have done it, but he wasn't available. Wait, Dav would have done what? I'll have to go back and check what that meant. But Dav is the creator of this map. <laughs> yeah, these blocks. Actually... When I saw this on a video, this cutscene, I actually 
I looked at this and I thought that looks similar to the temporal tower tile set maybe. And I actually checked and I think this is the exact same tile set. There are also like random instances of this tile set elsewhere. The like some falling blocks fall downward and I think those are these white ones and then black falling blocks go upward. Yeah, that's like interesting. How can it be like almost null? What does that imply exactly? I guess that's not like defined at all. It's just flavor text mostly, I guess. Maybe it's like representing the difficulty of this map somehow, but otherwise seems like just flavor text. Almost a maze, yeah. <laughs> that represents the puzzliness of this map, routing puzzles. I think it's beautiful now. That's just the front put up for players to make it beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> those are the falling blocks that go downward. World Abyss Plus, I would definitely play that. Like a longer full World Abyss map, that would be great. Of course, like no pressure to dab, <laughs> but this like seems to hint at it. And I think it could be great. Yeah, I know what this means now. Like, I played without getting this tip, and I think this tip would have helped me if I had found this cutscene. I can actually point out what I think this was referring to when I get there. <laughs> the Creation 3 l has a thing for this mentality. Okay, <laughs> that's like kind of an interesting detail. Akershi? Was it the name of this character? <laughs> yeah, hearts. I have found my hearts, yes, but not in this save file. Yeah. Can I climb on top of him? <laughs> I want to climb on your blocks, please. Lugia, I want to climb on your blocks. Let me climb on your blocks. And I will bounce from here. Yes, I did. I will scatter these blocks back everywhere. <laughs> I am the villain of this story. <laughs> What? What happened? Oh, you like stay still for some reason? What? <laughs> yeah, you can't go. So I assume the left side of this island is also just death. Yeah. I look at the video and check out the dialogue again. Also, the thing that Dav would have done is gather the pieces of the temporal tower. Yeah, that makes sense. That's the thing I like didn't really keep track of because I was going too slowly. Oh, Akershi was mentioned at the very start of the cutscene. I just didn't pay that much attention. Yeah, nothing weird there. Also, it's kind of funny that Madeline is now being compared to like legendary Pokemon because of playing these red Grandmaster maps. This was actually my first red Grandmaster map. And after that, I went straight into Cracked Reds. Like, I went straight into the Solar Express because it was just interesting to me. Nothing else was as interesting. So I took that challenge and it went fine. Okay, now back to normal gameplay. Lore break is over. 
I've been sort of thinking that I should do a Hollow Knight Silk Song playthrough kind of like this when it comes out because now I'm this is kind of like practice for me I don't care that much if these don't get that many views because then I have practice making videos if I do get any good ideas oh I totally skipped the gray spring Okay, I should stop for today, I think, so it doesn't get too late. I'll continue tomorrow, I think. Okay, new day. I feel like playing on analog is just making me appreciate how good keyboard directions are. Keyboard directions are so consistent and reliable. This map just puts in so many unique movements that still feel really good to pull off. This map is so good. What does it do that constantly with so relatively simple mechanics? Like, I'm thinking about the World Abyss versus Garden of Kotara thing again. Garden of Kotara, I feel like it it's just overused patterns. Nothing more. Why is it lacking? Why do I get a block booster sometimes? I think I'm grabbing it accidentally. So I should, like, make sure I don't grab by pressing more straight up. I keep being too low, just slightly. I need to, like, slow down a little bit somehow. Okay. What was it from there? So, jump to the right, wall bounce all the way over to the crystal. Yep. Okay. I can do it. <laughs> that was that would have been cool if I did it first try right, right after saying that I could do it. Turns out it's an easy room. <laughs> Not really. No, <laughs> the same thing again. Need to dash earlier. What? I didn't hit the spring. I think I understand it, but I'm not going to explain it. There, yes. I slowed down a bit. I didn't press right all the way in the dream jump before hitting the gray spring. That made it easier. No. Oh. <laughs> Actually, there's a checkpoint. Guess I'm being stupid. I wouldn't have minded to play that again. This was also really hard to route on the first time. Okay, so this is the second day that I'm recording. And yesterday was the hidden cutscene. And like, after I stopped playing yesterday, I thought that... I should actually make sure and look up if Temporal Tower is a real place in Pokemon. And I was... <laughs> Right, it is a real canon place in Pokemon games. And even the collapse of it was canon. Wait, how do I get that 
a switch. Do I do two right dashes? And then step on the block. Somehow wave dash on the block. But I know I need to probably upright dash into that spring. And then down dash, up dash, and wave dash. I'm going to see if I can straight wave dash from the air on that auto scroller. No. Oh yeah, I can't fall down like that. I have to dash twice. I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> so I tread pretty far, but I need to look. So fall down through there. And grab and then wall bounce, I think. Maybe there's a spring I can hit after that. From one of the moving blocks, like the one on the right. I think I'll like assume that that is what I need to use. And that block has a spring on it. And look where it goes. Yeah. I think you hit the spring on the lower block. Then up dash and hit the spring on the other block. Up dash again, step on top of it. And block boost it, wave dash to the end. Like, I love figuring things out like that. From the binoculars. And using save states, I feel like, would ruin that for me. Yep. Okay, I need to remember the previous demo hyper. Wait, so does the world abyss exist in Pokemon? I need to look that up as well. Yes, it is a Pokemon place as well. So that means this map is not really that much Pokemon fanfiction, it's just representing Pokemon areas in Celeste. No, oh, I'm too fast. Or, I should have done the upright dash later. No, I was... That is annoying. Fuck! That is awkward. I feel like this is the first room that I don't really like. It could also partially be just outside influences in real life at like this moment. Making it feel worse. Okay. Is it final room yet? Yeah, I think it's final room time. Yeah. I recognize that misleading small gap right there. I remember it was that. I'm not jumping fast enough and it's annoying me. <laughs> oh yeah, I need to demo hyper again, I think. Like that. But I'm too late. Yeah, I think that was correct. Oh yeah, and then I drop down, get all of those three coins, left dash into the spring. And I think the blocks on the right should make it easy to get to the end. No, oh, wrong side. No, oh, wrong camera. Now I'm too high. Oh, 
Wait, what do I do? I completely like forgot what exactly I need to do there. What? I need to... I need to go up! That's annoying. Okay, both of the other springs were brown. So I just hit the bottom spring, then right dash into grey, then up dash on the other ones. Okay, one more time. Beat the room. No! No! I need to be a little bit more patient and step on it first. I feel like the first death on the end there was a little unfair, but the one that just happened wasn't. It was just my fault. <laughs> okay, Finally. Okay. There. Four hours. Yes. And the beautiful end sequence. Turning up the volume on my headphones again. <laughs> this map is just <laughs> beautiful in every way. Music is beautiful, background and decoration in general is beautiful, routing is beautiful, and the gameplay that the routing leads to is also beautiful. <laughs> and the ending. Can I get up there though? I think I can. It's tight though. Come on. I know that this is possible if these are normal solid tiles. Grid aligned. No. Okay, I don't really care. Wait, I can still check. There is nothing there. Okay. Yeah, I think still, like after replaying, I think, yeah, it's reinforced that this is my favorite Grandmaster map. Like, Nelumbo and the Solar Express are also both amazing, and Pinball Purgatory I enjoyed a lot as well. But, like, this map is just, like, so beautiful, and the music creates that f flow when practicing. Which is like, exactly the kind of feeling I'm looking for with playing hard maps. Okay, I just want to get the heart now. One thousand four hundred and six deaths. Not that many, but the rooms are so long. <laughs> That's the most deaths by a long shot so far. Wait, 
I want to check what my original time on World Abyss was and compare. Okay, I'm going on my normal save file so I won't be on double stick. <laughs> World Abyss, 6 hours, um, like almost 7 hours. So it still took less on my second time using double stick than my original playthrough. Yeah, it's like the gap is closing in though. The double stick is creating some like precision issues a little bit. Like I don't have precision issues, but it's less precise still. Okay, I'm back on the double stick save file. I think I'll probably record 74 next, but crack threads will be fun. I want to do gaming room. Did I do it? Yes, gaming! Gaming! I am officially a gamer. So, I think that's it for this episode. Bye!